Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to compare how easy it is to create a Gantt chart in Project with Excel and Microsoft Visio. So first of all, I'm in Project on a blank file. I'm going to create a very small project. So title is going to be Project A, and then we'll just do a couple of tasks. Task 1, Task 2, and Task 3. So in project, to create a Gantt chart, when you type, it automatically creates the Gantt chart. So I can now highlight these three, indent them across, like that, so they're now part of this. Change the durations, like that. And then you can see the thing building on the right there. I can also highlight all three of them and click on this chain link, which will link them together. And if I double click on the white, I can put the task name next to them name so very quickly I can adjust this and see the Gantt chart how it sits if I change any of this information so if I put four days in there everything moves along and it just automatically adjusts so whatever you type there creates a Gantt chart straight away so that's Microsoft project now Microsoft Visio so in Microsoft Physio, I have a, the new template and I've gone into schedule and that's where the Gantt chart is. So I'll click on that. Now, when you click on that, I'm going to go for a blank option, create. It comes up with a wizard that helps you start this off. So it's given me five tasks, but I'll just go for four. All of this I'm going to leave as default, clicking OK. And then it will generate the Gantt chart. So that process itself is quite quick. Just make that a little bit bigger. So what you've got there is the task name. So it says task one. So I called that project A. And then I'll change these to task one, task two, and task three. So everything's the same. Task three. And then the durations I can change as well. So I won't touch the top one. So the duration, I'm just making these durations up so not exactly the same. So I'll go four on this last one. I'll do four. Like so, so you can see the, the things follow on. Now, if you want to, if I click on these three, highlight them like that, I'm using my shift key, I can indent them and then they come underneath the title like that. So if I link them again, with the shift key like that go up to the gantt chart tab you've got previous next and then over on the left you've got link and then unlink and you've got indent as well there so if i click on the chain that will link them together now they're all following on you can see how that works so it creates the gantt chart quite quick it is sort of dynamic if i change that duration to three days it will give me that difference there you can see the timeline now if i click on one of these i'm going to what's called shape data on these shapes you can see that there's a lot of project information in there so you've got this percentage complete for example i can put something in there and it will show a little bar showing it percentage complete now if i go back into project and do that if i go percentage complete in there i'll just use this one as an option you get the same feature so it's pretty similar there so back into visio so the gantt chart in visio is okay i think it's all right for sort of like the end product or the overarching view of a project but obviously that you are limited to the amount of tasks you can have due to the space and what you can see but it has got some scope if i click on the line i'll get onto that line the connector now it's got lag and zero days there if i put minus one d let's see what that happens i'll press enter on that you see that's pulled that task back so that's like it's coming back it's lead a minus numbers lead if i put plus two there two days that would be lag there'd be a gap so that's how that works. So if I go back into project and do that in there, so on this link here, if I double click into it, 
you can get your lead and lag. So it's on um, predecessors. There's a lag column, same thing, minus one D. See what happens there. Click OK to that. You get the same sort of thing happening. And again, you can see the, the words I've put there. So if I put a positive number there, I'll go 2FS plus 1, 2FS plus 1D. It'll go the other way. You get the gap. So both of those two packages are pretty similar in what they can do. Quite cool. Now back into Visio. So where I think Visio falls down in my view anyway, is if I click on this to look at this resource in there, you've got some option for resources. So if I put Bob and Bill, that's who the resource for this particular project is. But I can't see them anywhere on here straight off. What you have to do is grab a column from over the left hand side. So you basically pull a column over and I'll just sit it there. And then you can select percentage complete there. But I can go from here, resource, name, and then OK. And then it should drop that in. You can see that there now, resource for that. Now in project, what you have to do, if I go back into project, you basically can type it straight into the resource name column. But normally you would create a resource sheet which is that you'd fill it in over there so i'll just type it in when i do type it in it will actually go into that resource sheet but just to go do the comparison if i go in there i type bill comma ben exactly the same like that so you've got two people if i drop the arrow down you can see them in there and it also creates them on the resource sheet so you could type them there, like I said, or, or, or just type them in the column. So that's the same. Pretty cool. You can't see them on here, though, on the Gantt charts. But what you would do there is if I double click on this to get back into it, one of the options you've got is on the. Um, that was a right on the left. Let's say I want resource name. So resource. Resource name I want like that okay and then it will do that it gives you a visual on the Gantt chart so that is a little bit better than what you get in Microsoft Visio because I can see the resources but they're not sitting on the Gantt chart I'll just knock that off so we've got a bit more space come across a little bit now percentage complete um, I can't see that here either what you've got to do is bring another column in so bring another column in I'll just stick it there and it's on percentage complete anyhow, so I'll click OK, and then that will show me that information. So in project, I've got to go back into project. I haven't got that column on this particular view. There are views in project where that would be available, but just so you can see that I can just add it anyhow, and it'll give me the percentage complete column as well. So, so far, pretty similar in what we can do in terms of project in Visio. When we come to Excel, we've got a whole different ball game, really, because Excel needs quite a lot of formulas and things to achieve what we're doing here. Where we're just dragging and dropping in these two programs in Excel, we're going to have to create a formula to get it to work and use conditional formatting to get it to color up as well. So that's what we'll look at next. Excel. OK, so here I am in Excel with a Gantt chart already created. And basically, if I can just change the durations on some of these you can see that it works in a similar way to the other two packages um, but you'd need to use formulas for any lead or lag time that you wanted there's a bit there going on but this is all to do with the cells here I have got formulas in there but you'd have to be a bit more thoughtful of how you want to do that in terms of resources I'm just using numbers on this quantities and it's coloring up if there's a missing resource and not enough resources for a particular task i'm just using ones i could use people's names but it's nowhere near as dynamic as the other two programs visio and project in terms of showing resources and things like that also percent complete i haven't got it on here you can do that with conditional formatting but i've chosen to just do it in a status bar here data bar that's the percent complete so you can see it there 
So if I put that to 56%, the bar comes further across. So it's not sitting on there, but I do know before anybody says that you can actually format conditional formatting to do that and color this up. But for now, that's what I want to recreate. So let me just do that. If I just copy this data, the top bit, just copy that bit so we can just come down here with it. Just sit it down there. Control key to copy and we get the same information. So grab the phases as well, drag it down, use my control key to copy, down it comes. So start date on this one, I'll do today's date. And duration is one day. And then basically what you've got there is a formula. So it's just going to be equals that plus that. And then I've got to do a minus one on it because the way it works. So I'll just do minus one and then tick that. So it's one day, it starts in the 12th, it finishes on the 12th. If I put two days, it starts on the 12th, finishes on the 13th. If you didn't do that, that would just say the 14th, just adding two onto that. But we're actually starting at 8 o'clock in the morning, that's why that's like that. And then basically, I'll just do a very simple formula here where I'm just going to equals that. And then you just pull, you just put the durations in. I'll just do simple durations like that. Pull this date down. And then pull this date down. And then we should get that information coming in. Starts on the 15th of December, finish on the 16th, so 12th. So I need this to be the 12th of December. So I'll just change that. And then pull that one across. So it's the same all the way over. So slightly different date range. And then basically now what you need to do is use the conditional formatting and the and function. So this is the formula up there, basically. So let's just try that. If I highlight this space. Okay, so to get the conditional formatting to color up, you need to highlight this space. And then go into conditional formatting, manage rules. And then new rule. And then the formula option. And then you just get one line. So I'm going to use the and function. So it's equals and. Open the bracket on the and. And this is basically the function I'm going to use, the layout. So I want to click on that cell, but I only want the row to be locked, not the column. So I'm pressing F4. So that's just once. And then you can see that this just got the dollar sign in front of the 12. Is greater than or equals to the start date, which is B13. And on this B13, I just need the dollar sign on the B. So I'm pressing F4 once, twice. There's a dollar sign on the B. So that's the first bit, comma. And then do the same thing again, the same cell. F4 once just to lock the row is less than or equals to the end date, which is in column D. And it's the D I want dollar sign in. So it's F4, F4, like that. Close the bracket. Select the format that you want it to be, the fill. So I want it to be orange, clicking OK to that, clicking OK to that, OK to that, and then it fills it in. If you change the duration, that will just knock it over like so. Now, to do the complete, I need to do a little data bar. So it's conditional formatting again. This time I'm going data bar, picking any one of these, data bar, and there's no figures in there. So if you type some figures in there, let's go, let's say this zero complete all the way down. Zero complete. And just to make sure this works, if I put that to 25, you can see the bar coming right across. I don't want it to come across. And I also don't want that figure on there either. So I'm going in there. I'm going to manage rules. I'm editing this rule. I'm going to put that tick on there. I'm going to change automatic to number and automatic to number and then put the top one onto 100 so 100 would be like 100 percent complete click ok to that okay again and then that just shows it like so so if i just put some figures in the other ones you can see how that works wherever the percent complete is it's showing you that 
Now, to add resources is almost impossible. You can't have Bill and Ben add into this. You're going to have to just use numbers. You could type people's names. I have seen spreadsheets where people's names are in there. But just look at the effort I've had to do to get to that Gantt chart state. You're looking at project, which is instant. You're looking at Visio, which is also instant once you've created it through the wizard. And then editing it and getting it to show percentage complete and add resources is very, very easy to do. Whereas creating something in Excel is a bit more involved and you obviously need to have the knowledge of Excel for it to work. So in my view, project would be the best for Gantt charts. The problem with project, however, is the price of it. It's about £1,200 per license, so that puts a lot of people off. Visio standard is 100 odd quid, so that's not a great cost, but you've restricted in the size, how many, what you can see. I mean, there is, you can have more than five tasks, obviously, There's, it depends what you put in there, but it's um, it's a bit more difficult to, to manage. Excel, obviously, lots of space. You can have lots of space for your Excel Gantt chart but it is the hardest in my view. But that's all I want to do in this little video. Compare three different Gantt charts in three different programs and let you comment which you think is the best. So hopefully this video has been of use. Thank you for your time. I'll catch you on the next one.